multiple choice. I'm um, just going to okay 2019. This is the multiple choice. I'm um, just going to run through the whole thing again. Right, animal cells left in a solution with a lower water concentration than their contents. Sorry, I've got a little kind of ah, there we go. Okay, animal cells left in a solution with a lower water concentration than their contents. What will happen? Okay, animal cells. Um, so here's our animal cell with a nucleus. If we've got low water concentration outside, that means it's high water concentration inside water will go out um, so they will shrink okay it's not c and d because these are plant things um and burst would be if they'd had water come into it okay um question two diagram represents a typical plant cell which of the labeled parts could also be found in a typical fungal cell okay so fungal cells um are kind of odd in lots of ways so they've got the nucleus they've got a nucleus like an animal and plant cell. Um, they have a cell wall, like a plant cell. They've got plasmids and mitochondria, which are, you know, so they're kind of, they're kind of like a mixture of two different types of cells that you would expect to find. Um, so we expect all of these things, but we also um, have the cytoplasm and that's what K is. So K is the cytoplasm, L is the cell wall and M is the nucleus. All of these things I'd expect in a fungal cell. Okay, that got a little bit waffly, sorry. The diagram shows stages in the production of a protein in a cell. Which row in the table identifies the exact location of each stage? Okay, so DNA is in the nucleus. And stage two, where I change the mRNA into a protein. Well, the site of protein synthesis, you should know, is a ribosome. So the answer is B. Question four. A single strand of DNA contains 830 adenines, 929 cytosines, 774 guanines and 615 thymine bases. How many guanine bases would be in the complementary strand? Okay, you've just got to not panic when you see this. Okay, um, I'm looking for guanine. Guanine is paired with cytosine. And what they're telling you is a single strand has the numbers they're given. What's on the other strand? So the complementary strand would have 929 guanines. And that's the answer. Okay, question five. We've got a graph. Two different lines in the graph, which makes it reasonable for your level. Okay, proteins are broken down in the stomach into polypeptides. The graph shows the concentration of proteins and polypeptides in the stomach over 90 minutes. So we've got our time going across. We've got our protein concentration, which is our solid line, and you can see that falling. And the polypeptides are increasing. Okay. The ratio of protein concentration to polypeptide concentration in the stomach after 30 minutes. So I need protein to polypeptide, making sure that I get this round the right way. It asked me for protein to polypeptide. So 30 minutes. So at 30 minutes, I'm going to go up for my proteins. And I'm going to say that's 60. And then I'm going to go here with my uh, polypeptides. And that's going up in fours. Okay, so that is 36. And then you need to cancel it down. Um, so 5 to 3. Okay, you might have cancelled that down in two steps. So you might have gone, right, okay, that's 10 to 6. And then you would have gone, okay, right, I can actually cancel that down again. That's 5 to 3. It doesn't matter how many steps you take. It's totally fine. Question 6. Uh, flasks J, K, L and M were set up to investigate the production of carbon dioxide during respiration. Okay, so in J, we are absorbing any carbon dioxide that's there. We're in checking in K that all of that's out. There should be no, lime water shouldn't go cloudy. And then the air is going into the worms. The worms should then be producing um, carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide will then come into the lime water in M and it should go cloudy. Okay. So if we drop this down, we take out four of the worms. So we've only got one worm left. This is the question. Predict what would happen if only one worm was used in flask L. So what should happen? Well, nothing's changed until we get to L. So J and K has got nothing to do with it. So I'm not even going to look at my K. All I'm looking at is M. Okay. And what we have here is one fifth of the respiration because we've only got one worm instead of five. So my lime water should be turning much more slowly. Okay, and that's that's the answer. 
Which of the following reactions takes place during fermentation in plant cells? Plant is important, so can we get rid of lactate straight away? Because that's in animal cells. Um, what I'm expecting for plant cells is that we go from pyruvate to carbon dioxide and ethanol. I'm sure it's just a straight KU. You okay, just need to know that one. Question 8. A cell with 10 chromosomes divided by mitosis. Which row in the table identifies the number of daughter cells produced and the number of chromosomes in each daughter cell? Right. This is your definition for why mitosis is important. Okay. You start with the mother cell. Okay. It divides to produce two daughter cells. Okay. And what is essential is that however many chromosomes were in the mother you have in the daughter cells, they must be identical. Otherwise, you have problems with um, normal things happening. Okay, um, so I get two daughter cells and they all should have 10. So we'll see. Which row in the table shows the type of message, sorry, moving this down a bit, type of message that is transferred through various structures in a reflex arc. Okay, so in the neuron, you're expected to know that we have electrical signals. Now, so if you've got that far, you're good because that can only possibly be B. But to be absolutely clear, the synapse, that is the gap between each of the, between the neuron and the next neuron, is a chemical move. Okay, we use a neurotransmitter to make that happen. Um, so answer is B. Question 10. Hormones are released by, straight gotta know, endocrine glands. Okay, your, your blood cells don't release them. Your receptor cells, um, not really a thing. Receptor proteins are on the target tissues. Um, question 11. Uh, the volume of one bird's testes was measured on the last day of each month for a year and the graph shows the result. Okay, which of the following statements is true? Okay, so you're just working through each one and saying which of these is correct. Okay, the volume of testes is constant from the end of November to the end of February. Okay, end of November is here. Well, uh, no, that's dropping down there, so that's wrong. Okay, increases more between the end of March and end of April than any other month. So end of March here to end of April here. So that's gone up by 200. So then you've got to look at every other month to find out if that's actually the case, if it increases more or less. The only one that I think could be in the running is here. Um, and that's increasing by exactly the same amount so it's not more that's really tight actually though you have to be reading that very carefully um it increases for only five months of the year um so it increases march april may june july august one two three four five six so not only five decreases for four months uh decreases september october November, December, stays the same January, February. So D, that's a lot of work. But, you know, it's just work through each one and you get the mark. Question 12. Which term describes the type of variation in which a characteristic is controlled by more than one gene? Straight gotta know it is polygenic. Okay, what that means is that it will show up as a continuous variation, but we're just looking for the term for the genes. Okay, question 13. Um, sorry, just oh, <laughs> sorry. I just realised as I was going past that I hadn't read that properly. The number of genes. It says what term describes the type of variation. So correct answer is A there, not C. Okay. Uh, question thirteen. Albinism is a condition in which the production of a pigment that that colours the skin is limited. It is controlled by a recessive allele. Diagram shows how a family was affected. The chance of this couple's third child being affected by the condition is. Okay, so the father was unaffected, um, the mother was unaffected, but you have an affected child. If it's recessive, that means that they must have both given a recessive allele. So they must both have a recessive allele, but they don't show the condition themselves. So that must mean that they have an unaffected or a dominant allele. You don't actually know about child two. You're just going to do a Punnett square. So here's mum and here's dad put them in a Punnett square. So child, unaffected, not even a carrier. And this child is unaffected, this child is unaffected, but both of them could pass it on. And this child is affected, okay? There is a one in four chance. It doesn't matter that they've already had a child that was affected. 
it is a one in four for the next child they have. Okay. Uh, question 14. Which row in the table describes features of phloem? Phloem. Phloem is food. So I'm transporting sugar. And you just need to know okay, that you have sieve plates in phloem. So A. Okay, we've got a mammalian heart and associated blood vessels. Um, and you've got to work out what the chamber is in the blood vessels. So chamber Y is your right atrium going down to your right ventricle coming up through your pulmonary artery. So by this point you've got the mark, but just to be clear what's going on with the rest of it, uh, it comes back in pulmonary vein, and then we've got our left atrium, our left ventricle, and then we're going up and out. This one is the aorta, and finally comes back in this side in the vena cava. Okay, so chamber Y is our right atrium, um, where we're going right atrium and our blood vessel that we're coming out is the pulmonary artery. C. Okay, table shows composition of some gases in inhaled and exhaled air. How many times greater is the carbon dioxide concentration in exhaled air than in inhaled air? Okay, so carbon dioxide is in exhaled 4 and in inhaled 0 0.04. So you basically just divide 4 by 0 0.04 and that gets you I'm hoping even without a calculator, C, 100. Question 17. We've got a survey results of estimated seal, grey seal pup populations every two years from 2010 to 2016. If this grey seal pup population continues to increase by the same number at each survey, what will the estimated population be in 2020? Okay, so this is going to be much easier when you're reading this off an actual paper and not off a screen. Okay, if I can just get this one for the 2016. So this one is, so this is 42, so it's going up in, in, we're going 48, 49. I'm trying to find the middle point of this one. This is actually quite a diff difficult one to read. Um, we're going, take our, take our 2014 across. Um, and it's, I think, there. Difficult one to actually see. And here's my next one. Okay. Um... So you've got to read these two numbers off carefully and then add it to the top number, okay? Which I did write these down, but then I've not written down what my calculation was. It's 53,200. Um, would get me to, because you've got to do it twice, okay? Because you've got 2018 and then 2020, okay? So find the gap and then add times two onto the top of that one. Um, as I say, I can't get that to read carefully on the computer. Question 18. Competition occurs when required resources are in short supply. Okay, straight definition. Inter-specific competition occurs when? So inter means I'm looking at different species and they need to have the same thing. Okay. Um, and we're just looking for some of the same resources because... They don't need exactly the same things. That would be intraspecific. Question 19. A lot of reading in this. Okay. At six different sample sites in a stream, the oxygen concentration, pH and numbers of different organisms were recorded. The higher the number of organisms in the sample, the more abundant they are. Okay. So we've got um, oxygen concentration and pH given. And then we've got a number of each of these four different um, organisms. Using results from both tables, identify which of the following conclusions is false. Freshwater snails do not survive in water with lower pH. Okay, so freshwater snails, let's find them, are here. Okay, so they're surviving sites 5 and 6. Um, pH is 7.6 and 8. It says they do not survive in with lower pH. Um... I would agree, because here's our low pH ones, they don't survive there, so that's true, and we're looking for false. Changes in pH have little effect on the distribution of dragonfly nymphs. Here we go, 332322, that's not changing, so that's not right. Mayfly nymphs are at their most abundant when the oxygen concentration is lowest. Okay, so the oxygen concentration is falling as we go along the site, so actually here's my lowest at 5. So mayfly nymphs are at their most abundant um, when we have our lowest 
oxygen is what they're saying. Um, and that's not true. Okay, because the lowest concentration is at five, but the most abundant for the mayfly now is at six. So that one's false. And just to check this name, which I'll probably mispronounce, I'll just say fly larvae, are at their most abundant when the oxygen concentration is lowest. So as we've already said, the oxygen concentration is lowest at site five, and that is true for them. So we were looking for false. Okay, question 20. In which parts of a green leaf would most photosynthesis occur? Right, you just need to know all these layers. So the lower and upper epidermis don't have um, chlorophyll so or chloroplasts, so they're nothing involved with this at all. Um, and our top set is our palisade mesophyll, and then under that we've got spongy mesophyll. They're your big hairs in terms of photosynthesis. We've got the rate of photosynthesis in a plant under different light intensities, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and our rate of photosynthesis going up, uh, 28, 53, 76, and 85. Which change in light intensity produces the greatest increase in the rate of photosynthesis? You literally just need to go through, okay, so it's 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50. Look for the differences with each one, you know, use a calculator if we need on this one, um, but your biggest difference is your 26 that you've got between 10 and 20. 22. A gardener decided to treat his crops with both fertilisers and pesticides. A result of this would be, right, fertiliser. Fertiliser is going to increase um, your soil nitrates. Okay, so increase, increase, not decrease. And pesticides, so that should mean I get rid of things that are feeding on the crop. So that should increase my crop yield. So correct answer is B. 23. Which of the following could occur as a result of fertiliser leaching into a fresh water pond? So if I've got fertiliser, I'm going to increase plants. So my algae is going to increase. That means that also my algae is going to die, which means my bacterial population is going to increase. And that means that they will use up all of the oxygen. So oxygen will decrease. Okay. 24. For the successful biological control of white fly in a greenhouse, it was recommended to use 50 individuals of a predator species to kill a population of 1,500 white fly. The number of predators that would be required to kill 21,000 white fly is... Okay, so there's lots of different ways you could do this. I think the easiest way um, is to take your 1,500, divide that by 50, and that will tell you how many you need for just... or how many each predator then kills, and then divide that number by, sorry, the 21,000 by that number, okay? And that should give you 700. Last question in the section. Which of the following statements describes the possible effects of a mutation on the survival of an organism? Okay, so you should know that mutation can be either advantageous or disadvantageous. So advantageous, disadvantageous, or it might just do nothing at all. So all three. And that's the section.